Asante came to TurboTax after graduating from culinary school and landing a job in the hottest kitchen in town. My hands are full all day, every day. I love it. Asante, as your TurboTax expert, I'll make your moves count, guaranteeing 100% accurate filing and your maximum refund. Sound good? Yes, expert! Switch to Intuit TurboTax and make your moves count. See guarantee details at TurboTax.com slash guarantees. Experts only available with TurboTax Live. Hey, are you looking for the perfect day? Well, new research says that you should be springing out of bed to Scott or I'm a believer by the monkeys. And then you put on ABBA in the afternoon and then you go to bed with Layla. What? Yeah. Researchers analyzed more than two billion songs to provide the ideal soundtrack for the entire day. Well, they worked with Spotify. And it wasn't really surprising. They found energetic, cheery tunes get you going in the morning and slower tracks are best before bedtime. So you have this midday lull in tempo from noon to 2 p.m. And that's when you should be putting on danceable tracks like Mamma Mia or Summer Nights from the musical Grease because they give you this post-lunch lift. And then Eric Clapton or Moby, they work best at night. Prince's Purple Rain or Meat Loaf's I'll Do Anything for Love, But I Won't Do That they say, are most well-received at 1 or 2 in the morning. And, you know, speaking of Meatloaf, you know, they produce three really great songs. But of them, I can only recognize Bad Out of Hell and Heaven Can Wait because, after all, two out of three ain't bad. Ah, oh, yes. And welcome to Tech Refresh. It's your weekly fun show about all things digital. I'm Kim Commando. And joining us, as always this week, we have Ali Seligman, our amazing content queen. Hello there, Ali. Hello. And Ben Bradley, he's our trusty news director and, of course, our bonafide geek of the week. Hello there, Ben. Hey, Kim. And, of course, we have Matt Hoffel, who's here with us. He's our dedicated Gen Zer or Internet Scout or Millennial. <laughs> You're really a Millennial, aren't you? A hey, little bit over a Gen Z, a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. And just a quick reminder, we'd love you to rate, review, subscribe, and follow this podcast. And Tech Refresh has been brought to you by thecurrentnewsletter.com. Tech news and tips you can use right now. There's no ads. It's absolutely free. See a sample and sign up right now while you're thinking about it. And you want to head over to thecurrentnewsletter.com. And yes, yeah, smart Alec Bob, who listens to us in Chicago, said, yeah, why do you always say like the current newsletter? It's the, okay, well, whatever. I want you to go to this web address, thecurrentnewsletter.com. All right, it's time now to get started with the news. And Allie, take it away. All right. I always like to start out with the big news of the day, right? What you need to know in the tech world. First, there's the Robinhood app breach. Okay, data breaches always feel bad, but when it's something that has to do with your money, it is mm. extra bad, right? We really don't bad. want that. It is. There are a couple steps you can take if you use it. Change your password, of course. Make sure that you have 2FA on to secure your account. And you can also check to see if there are any strange devices that have signed up under your account, which is a really nice feature. So just go to the security and privacy settings and you'll see devices in there. If anything strange is in there, definitely kick it out. Change your password. Then there's the news that Chrome is tracking you, even though you have told it not to. And oh, that is through. Oh, no. Really? <laughs> They're tracking yes. us? That's Shocker, insane. right? Well, if you recall, we talked about how Androids and iPhones are being tracked through the accelerometer, which is basically your phone's um, motion sensor. Well, yes, it's happening with Chrome, too. They just called, got called out for it. So you might want to consider a different browser for your phone. I really like the DuckDuckGo browser. I don't know if you've ever used it, but mm -mm, there's I've never this little used it. button. It's awesome. And there's this little button. It's a little fire emoji. And when you click that, it just automatically deletes all your tabs, clears your cookies, clears your history. So you don't have to go into a menu. You can just click the one little button. It's really nice. And now onto the biggest news that caught my eye. Google has a new pet portrait feature that shows what? you which famous painting your animal resembles. So it can be your dog, your cat, your rabbit, your fish, whatever. Um, this is clearly big news for those of us obsessed with their pets like I am. And I figured it'd be a nice break from all the bummers I usually share. So all right. So now this, did you did you take a picture of Nova, that cute little puppy that you have and figure it out? Of like, course. Of course I did. It's in excellent. the Google Arts and Culture app. You might you guys might remember this. A couple of years ago they did this with people. You could take your picture and it would show you hey, here's what piece of fine art you most resemble. Did oh, yeah, I remember that? that. Yeah, I remember that. That was actually a lot of fun. Yeah, it was. And this is the dog version. So it's in uh, the Google Arts and Culture app. 
It's You can download it for iPhone or Android. And then it just uses AI to match the picture of your pet with some famous painting. I did do it with Nova this morning. And, you know, there were a ton, all these little, you know, painted terriers and different black and white dogs. And it was really cute and fun to, to go through. If you are thinking, great, now Google gets another little piece of my life. Yeah, Google Photos already probably has like a million pictures of my dog, so I don't care, but <laughs> something to keep in mind. Well, you know, and it is fun. And, it, you know, Google is doing this with, you know, taking pictures of you or your dogs or your pets and turning you into like what would be a great piece of fine art. But you have to remember that Google's just doing all of this for the Monet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Ben, what's happening in your news world? Okay, I'm going to start off. It shouldn't come as a surprise that I subscribe to a lot of services. Netflix. Wait, no, what? Ooh. No. Yeah. no <laughs> Paramount shocked. Plus. Disney Plus. Apple TV. All the pluses. <laughs> Just all of them. And, you know, Apple Music and, you know, stuff like that. I say all this because now Twitter has its own subscription service called Blue that just came to the U.S. after months of testing in a few other countries. Anyway, it's $3 a month. What, no matter how you use it, iOS, Android, or the web version. And, but it raises the question, why would you pay for this? You know, when I first heard about it over the summer when they first announced it, it really just seemed to be geared towards power users, features like you can undo a tweet within 30 seconds of sending it, kind of like you can with Gmail. Uh, you can do things like upload videos that are 10 minutes long instead of I think the cap is like just over two minutes for non-paid. Uh, organized tweets, you can pretty it up with, customizable colors and icons, you know, neat. But when it was announced that it was actually rolling out in the last few days, Twitter Blue came with something that hadn't been uh, previously revealed. Subscribers can also access ad-free articles from like 300 different oh, publications around the well country. that's something. I mean, that's Yeah, that's like USA stupid. Today, Rolling Stone, Washington Post, things like that. Ad-free. Now, that doesn't mean the stuff that they keep behind paywalls. Mm. Oh. Wow. That's yeah. way less cool. <laughs> that's yeah. a big so, catch. <laughs> from what I can tell, that's how it differs from like Apple News Plus where you pay 10 bucks to get all these publications, but it, uh, you should get around at least a lot of those paywalls. But, you know, I just, I can't imagine yet another something that I have to subscribe, even if it's just three bucks a month. You know how they just all add up. And even with the free, you know, the ad-free articles, I just don't see how it'd be worthwhile to anyone who just doesn't live on Twitter like 24 hours. You know, you talk about subscribing to everything. And I have to tell you, I was going through some things and I was really disappointed, Ben, that you're not a paid member of the commando community. I, <laughs> I, I, I don't even know. I mean, I don't want to say this publicly and I probably shouldn't. But I mean, you say you subscribe to everything, but you're, you're not a member. How do you know it's just not under my uh, pen name? <laughs> Pseudonym. Yes. Pseud yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Benedict. 24. Yes. Bernadette. That's what it is. It's Bernadette Bradley. That's Brad what it Brad Binley. Is. That, was, that was it. That was it. All right. Uh, let's move on. Uh, by the end of this year, Amazon's massive fleet of delivery drones, they were supposed to be filling the skies. Just you know, buzzing along every neighborhood throughout the country, delivering everything from toothpaste to laptops to your front door. But what happened? Well, one Sunday evening eight years ago, Amazon's Jeff Bezos, he predicted on 60 Minutes that by the fall of 2021, Amazon's delivery drones would be literally everywhere. But let's all take a look outside. Are they there? I see anybody I see, see one? Them. No, we don't <laughs> see them, but not at all. I mean... It's safe to say that the whole Amazon drone plan has been a massive failure. But if anyone could have done it, right, it certainly would have been Amazon. So what went wrong? Of course, they hyped it all up. And then there's the more practical concerns as national security. I mean, could you just imagine a sky full of drones making legitimate deliveries and others that are threatening the national power grid? Who knows what else? So don't look to the skies for Amazon's drones. They're not coming anytime soon. Um, and speaking of Amazon, one of the hottest Christmas gifts this year is one of the hardest ones to get. Does anybody know what it is? Anyone know what it is? Video games, PS PS5s, oh. uh, PS5s, Xbox Series X, is it the Oculus, that? Oculus, probably Rift. some weird doll. There's always a weird doll on the list. Yeah, that I've never yeah like those LOL dolls or whatever. I thought that was <laughs> fake. I know, <laughs> but I'll tell you, the kids really like them. The answer is actually an e-bike. That's right. 
is oh. that they're everywhere. They're fast. They're fun. I have one. I absolutely love, love, love my e-bike. It is phenomenal. Yep. It is so good. My parents have some. They love them. Oh, they're great. They're outselling classic bikes by more than two to one, and sales are only getting stronger. They are pricey. I will warn you. I paid $6,000 for my e-bike. <laughs> Wow. Yes. Wow. And I was sitting there going, wow, I really better like this bike a lot. <laughs> but I'll tell you what's the best part about the e-bike is that I was going up this massive hill. I mean, you know, like major hill. And I saw these two guys and they were on mountain bikes and they were just like huffing and puffing, huffing and puffing, huffing and puffing, trying to get up this hill. So I figured, you know what? Darn it. I don't have to huff and puff. And so <laughs> I put it into third gear and I buzzed past them. And now mine looks like a regular mountain bike. And one of the guys like, dang, did you see that girl? She just like totally flew by. She smoked us. <laughs> and I'm like, I turned around. I looked at him. I said, yeah, I know. I know. They come in two flavors. One is like a slow electric moped. You don't need to pedal. You have a handlebar throttle and it can go up to 20 miles per hour. So it's kind of like a mini motorcycle or a mini bike. Um, the other is a more traditional bike. That's what I have. As you pedal, a small electric motor kicks in. With just one turn of the pedals, you're traveling as if you have pedaled three or four times. And so they call that pedal assist. And it feels like your bike uh, weighs nothing as you climb the steepest hills, like I mentioned. And you're going to be buying one this holiday. You make sure that you want to buy it now. Uh, there is a definite wait list that's growing. Because I, I wanted to buy uh, a couple more for us for Phoenix and because we have them in California. And they were like, um, do you want these, like, uh, delivery in April or May? I'm like, mm, Oof. April or May? Oh, but there's this old tech joke about bikes. Um, here's how it goes. A computer science student at MIT, he showed up at his buddy's dorm room with a brand new bike. And his buddy said, hey, dude, sweet bike. Where'd you get it? And the guy says, you'll never believe this. I was walking across the campus here at MIT, and this beautiful girl on a bike stopped. She threw down her bike. She tore off her clothes, and she said, just take whatever you want. And his buddy stared at him blankly for a minute and said, hey, smart move. I mean, her clothes would have never fit you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you want to stay right where you are? Coming up in just a few moments, we've got some insider secrets and tips that will make you sound smarter on Zoom calls and dinner parties, so stay right where you are. Let me tell you about a revolutionary new mobile voicemail app. If you've got a business, your voicemail is probably filled with messages from customers. Often the messages don't contain all the details you need. But what if you were able to get visual information from your callers? That's something you can't do with a traditional audio voicemail box, but you can with Fillmore Productions Video Voicemail. With Fillmore Productions Video Voicemail, callers receive a link to download the mobile app. There they can view important details about your business, watch videos about what you have to offer, and then leave you a video message. Actors and musicians can showcase what they do, and callers to medical practices or repair shops can report their issues visually. There are so many things that video voicemail can do for a business that makes audio voicemail a thing of the past. Discover what video voicemail can do for your business. Visit GetVideoVoicemail.com. That's GetVideoVoicemail.com. That's GetVideoVoicemail.com. Welcome back to Tech Refresh. It's your weekly fun podcast about all things digital. And just a quick reminder that we're always going to ask you to rate, review, follow, subscribe to these podcasts because this way more people find the podcast. And, you know, speaking of Twitter, why don't you tweet it out and say Tech Refresh is the best tech podcast in the entire universe. It is. So this is part of the podcast where we like to talk about some insider secrets and tips to make you sound smarter, as I like to say, on Zoom calls and those dinner parties. And now this is a personal story. This tip, I have to tell you guys that I have an acquaintance, a pretty prominent celebrity. I'm not going to say who it is, but you definitely know the person's name if I were to tell you who it is. Okay. She calls me all the time asking for tech advice, asking for tech help, uh, what she should buy, why this doesn't work. And, you know, she lost her Facebook password and how does she recover it? And, is is it safe to use Apple? You know what I'm saying. So it's like this constant flow of calls. And of course, I have her hidden on my text messages. So when the texts come in, I don't get every single one because there's sometimes there's four or five a day. So I decided that I would try to figure out a way that when she calls that I, my phone would not ring. Okay. 
Now, do you know on an iPhone, that's very difficult to do? It's almost impossible. You think that you'd be able to say, when this person calls, do not ring my phone, right? I mean, mm -hmm. just, yeah, you think. I, I don't want to hear could. anything. Well, as it turns out, you can't do that. What? What you have to do, this is so strange to me. What you have to do is you have to have a ringtone that's silent. <laughs> so when the person oh. calls, you don't hear the phone ring because you have to have a ringtone associated with the contact. So then I'm thinking like, oh, certainly on your iPhone's list of ringtones that you would have a option for silent, correct? No, 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 there is no <laughs> such option. So if you want to make a silent ringtone, you can get into GarageBand and do all that and then save it as that special file format. Then you can import it into your iPhone or you can do what I did. You open up the ringtones and then there's an option that says tones store. Okay. You go to the tone store, and that's where you can download all kinds of ringtones, but that's where I downloaded a silent ringtone, okay? All yeah. it is is silence. That's <laughs> all it is. And I paid $1.29 for the silent <laughs> ringtone uh, because so this way, when this person calls, my phone doesn't ring. Isn't that the strangest thing that you ever heard You'd of? you think it'd be easier. That should be. And so I thought, you know, we should be in the ringtone business and just putting out silent ringtones. That's all that it is. <laughs> this one only dogs can hear. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it is. But I will tell you that I have different ringtones for different people, you know, different sounds, so I can know exactly who it is. And my, I was in church a couple of weeks ago, and my friend Joe called me, and I was so embarrassed because her ringtone is Highway to Hell. And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> no Gotta man. put that out. Put that down. No, no. All right, Ben, give us a great tip. Okay. Have I mentioned I have a lot of streaming services? I don't no, think I have. Haven't. No, no. Haven't, not at all. We're very shocked by that. <laughs> yes, I know. Well, this is something that I do every so often. I have a mix of streaming gadgets, depending on the TV around the house. It's mainly either Roku or Fire TV sticks. And when you download the apps or channels, whatever you want to call them on, either of the platforms, they just show up at the bottom but it's actually very easy to rearrange them to put the ones you use most at the top. Um, let's say you have just a mess of apps on the Roku home screen, uh, like the ones I, just, I mentioned earlier, you know, along with YouTube, Sirius XM, ESPN, whatever. I think I have like 35 or so on the Roku I use most. All you have to do is use the remote to arrow down to the app you want to move. When it's highlighted, hit the star button, select the option to move channel, and then use the arrows to move it to the spot you want. Hit OK. That's it. And then you just repeat it for the other channels. So for Fire TV Sticks, it's pretty much the same thing, except you only see six of the streaming apps on your home screen. But when you click on the icon with the three squares, that brings you to your whole list. Again, you highlight the app. Instead, this time you push the menu button, move it, hit OK. And that's it. Star button on the Roku, menu button on the Fire TV. And it's like, you think it might take a long time, but it doesn't. It's like the perfect thing to do when you're ignoring people calling you. <laughs> with the silent ringtone. Now, I imagine, Ben, that your desktop doesn't look anything like mine with all kinds of icons and crap all over and things saved in different places that shouldn't be there. Organization is key, always. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, look at, I mean, guys, look at him behind him. I mean, everything's all in the right place. I mean, yeah, you, probably you, have like an, you probably have a color-coordinated sock drawer, too, I bet. I just say they're they're <laughs> split up by lengths and uh, you know work or not work. So oh, loves no. his label maker. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> He's the guy who buys the labor maker. <laughs> Spends his weekends. Remember. <laughs> All right, Allie, give us a great tip. Well, first, Kim, you just reminded me. I cleaned my desktop on my laptop the other day, and I felt like a brand new person. There was so much crap, so many screenshots, so many files that I hadn't put anywhere. It took me like 10 minutes and I feel way better. So first, a plug to do that if you haven't done it in a long time. Okay, but this comes from the woman who sat for six months with the same calendar, November of 2019 <laughs> behind her. Listen, I mean, come I'm on. I'm going to blame that on pandemic depression. Also, I'm doing my best to turn things around, okay? <laughs> just, All right. just give me a break. All right, I have 
Another bad habit of only restarting my computer when it is being a total pain. And so then you're all, you know, you want it to come right back because you're in the middle of doing something and you get annoyed because it takes forever to start back up. Well, my problem is when I got a new MacBook a few months ago, I never changed all the programs that start when you start up your computer and a lot can happen that really slows you down. So just a little reminder, if you go a little crazy every time you start up your computer because you're waiting for Spotify and your browser and your VPN and your this and your that, you can change all that. Now, I'm not going to go through all the steps because you're not going to remember anyway because you're just listening, but if you go to commando.com in the little search bar, just type in startup programs, you can get the steps for Windows and Mac. It's really easy, and once you do it, it makes restarting your computer so much better. You don't have to wait so long. You know, that is that is really something. I mean, because it's one of these things that you don't think of, and you just go on, and you keep using your Mac or your Windows PC, and then you never really go, oh... Um, I should probably look at everything that starts because you know what I'm guilty of that right now because I had to restart my Mac because of course there was that another update and then as it's restarting it's like you see all these things just pop up on the dock and I'm like oh man I really have to get in there so again just go to commando.com and you want to search for Windows startup programs or Mac startup and then we have the step-by-step -step instructions right there. All right, we're going to change course just a little bit because it's time now for You Choose the Fake News. That's right, fake news, false information, and stories are just made up to create some buzz and good headlines are everywhere. But as we scroll through the endless stories in our feed, we always need to keep an eye out and think about which stories are facts and which ones are fake. So that's why we play here just to keep everybody on their toes. It's time now for you to choose the fake news. And this week, it's Ben who's going to be stumping us now, remember, two stories are real and one is fake. Take it away, Ben. All right. Lightning strikes twice, but this time in a good way. Everyone knows you have a better chance of getting hit by lightning than winning the lottery, but some have both. A golf course groundskeeper in New Hampshire is lucky to be alive after he was struck by lightning back in 2016. Well, last week, the now 52-year-old man's luck kicked in again when he won $1.3 million in the state's online lottery. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. All right. Number two. There's a new Guinness record for the world's largest video game joystick. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. A professor at none other than Dartmouth University built a massive replica of the classic Atari 2600 joystick from 1977. But this one is 10 feet high, weighs about 3,000 pounds. <laughs> it actually <laughs> works, though. It you works. just have to have at least two people to operate it. <laughs> to move it back and forth. Mm -hmm. All right, number three. A time traveler from the future has a dire warning. A TikTok user named Javier says he's trapped between right now and the year 2027, where he's the last person on Earth following a major disaster. He even Sorry. uploaded the video on TikTok to prove it, showing part of a deserted Spanish city. <laughs> okay, so we have lightning. <sighs> The uh, huge game controller for the Atari. Or three, the time traveler, the guy's stuck, and of course he's taken to TikTok to tell the world that he needs some help. And he will be the last man standing in the year 2027. Um, is he good looking? Just wondering. <laughs> <laughs> That's for you all to decide. <laughs> all right. Okay, so uh, I'll go first. I never go first. Okay. Hey. I'm going to say story number one is the fake story. Okay. Uh, because I don't think lightning can do all of that. It's going to strike and somebody's going to win money in the golf course and things like that. So I, I'm going to go with uh, number one is the fake. I believe that there is such a game controller because like the Guinness Book of World Records is all over. And also the story number three about the time traveler. That's just perfect for TikTok. So what do you guys think? Go for it, Matt. Okay, um, so I'm going to start and go backwards. So I, I'm fairly certain that number three is correct because TikTok is just full of people claiming that they're time travelers. They're always <laughs> like, oh, I've been to all these times and blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, oh, my gosh, it's a super eye roll. So I'm pretty sure that one's real. Sounds not real. Um, I feel like I would have seen the big game controller. That one's up in the air. And then the lightning strike thing, you know, 
I've heard of crazier things happening, so I feel like that one might be true. So I'm, I'm going to go with number two. I'm going to go with the giant Ooh, gaming controller. Okay. I think I'm going out on a limb, but I'm trying. All right. <laughs> what do you think, Al? Well, my gut instinct was same as you, Kim, that the first story is fake. And not because I don't think that that couldn't happen, but I just think the other two are so wild that if Ben made up the TikTok thing, well done, Ben. And if you made up the Atari thing, well done, Ben. So I'm going to say number one is a fake story. Okay, so Ben, all right, uh, just the two smartest women in your entire life. I mean, aside from your your wife, of course, are saying that the number one is fake. And, and then there's Matt. Okay, Matt's going yeah. with the game controller. And, you know, we always give him a little bit of a pass. So which of the three stories are real? All right. Two of you are no longer allowed to play this game. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dang it. Yes, the... The video Amazing. game, the Atari joystick is real. Uh, the TikTok user, well, he's real, whether or not he's from the future, debatable. But <laughs> And actually, though, there have actually been a couple cases, not in the last few years, but there have been cases where people have been hit by lightning and then they go on to win the lottery. Incredible. Uh, Just not this one. Well, here, okay. <laughs> Virtual high five, Al. Here we go. <laughs> we won. Well, we won. And to answer Kim's earlier question, Ben, is Javier handsome? Yes. <laughs> I thought he wore hoodies in a lot of his videos. So. Mm. <laughs> All right. We'll have to do our own research, Kim. Coming up, you want to stay right where you are because Matt, our dedicated internet scout, is going to tell us what's happening on the internet that is drip. What? Yes. Some Gen <laughs> C slang is coming up. Here on Tech Refresh. Hey, welcome back to Tech Refresh. It's your weekly fun show about all things digital. We're going to make you laugh the whole time. And if you laugh just once, make sure that you head over to wherever you get your podcast and, you know, give us a nice review. I mean, I especially like the gentleman who said, here's a plug. And he put the emoji of a plug as the <laughs> subject of the review. Okay, that was cute. We love that. Five stars all the time. And Matt is here with us now, our dedicated internet scout, to tell us, well, in just a few moments about Gen Z slang. And in case you're wondering about drip, it means anybody, anybody, Matt, what does it mean? I mean, I was going to let you guys guess to see how you guys do. Okay. Oh. All right. So before we get into that, <laughs> let's guess. Ben, what does drip mean? And can you use it in a sentence? Let me tell you about a revolutionary new mobile voicemail app. If you've got a business... Your voicemail is probably filled with messages from customers. Often the messages don't contain all the details you need. But what if you were able to get visual information from your callers? That's something you can't do with a traditional audio voicemail box, but you can with Fillmore Productions Video Voicemail. With Fillmore Productions Video Voicemail, callers receive a link to download the mobile app. There they can view important details about your business, watch videos about what you have to offer, and then leave you a video message. Actors and musicians can showcase what they do, and callers to medical practices or repair shops can report their issues visually. There are so many things that video voicemail can do for a business that makes audio voicemail a thing of the past. Discover what video voicemail can do for your business. Visit GetVideoVoicemail.com. That's GetVideoVoicemail.com. That's GetVideoVoicemail.com. That new car is so drip. <laughs> Close. <laughs> okay, Allie. Um, did you see the drip on LeBron last night on the way to the game? I think it's oh. like cool, cool stuff, like yes. all his gear, like a cool sense of style. Like, yeah, yeah. you know, like yeah. like my drip is iconic, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. I have this outfit right is dripping. Is yeah, this right, outfit Matt, so is dripping, you know? That <laughs> outfit is dripping. That's right. Okay, Matt, so tell us what's happening on the internet so that when our family members and friends who talk to us, then we don't look like and say, wow, did that happen? You're like totally in the know. And because you're hip, you listen to Tech hey. Refresh. Tell us the first story we need to know about, Matt. This week, um, scientists discovered or developed a way to turn brainwaves into handwriting. So this has been trending online and on Twitter. So they've had, they basically developed this um, net that you put over your, uh, uh, the head and they're using it for people that are paralyzed from the neck down so that they can write. Now this technology has been used in the past um, to be able to pick out on a keyboard letters for people that can't type or do anything like that. 
Um, but this is different because this allows your brain to have its own specific handwriting. So basically, wow. people that are paralyzed are able to put on this thing and they can think about writing. They can think about writing the letters in their head. And a computer screen will use AI to develop what that shape is. Isn't so even that if you amazing? Are amazing. So even if you're paralyzed, you can still have your own individual handwriting. And the internet has kind of taken off with this because now everybody wants to try it and see how good their brain's handwriting is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you, it has to be better than my real handwriting. I mean, oh yeah, me too, for sure. <laughs> it's got to be awful. And, you know, and the brain is the most important organ in the body. Well, according to the brain that is, right? I mean, <laughs> Okay, so Matt, now you have a story about space that's trending online? Yes. So um, the SpaceX capsule uh, landed in the um, Gulf of Mexico this week after being on the space station for hundreds of days. Um, the three astronauts came back down. This is the third mission that was a return mission from the International Space Station. Um, and this is a big deal because this is kind of proven to NASA over the last few missions that this is SpaceX's big thing. This is one of the things that's going to be making them all their money, which is going to lead to the Starship, which is their next big rocket. So they've had their smaller rockets. They've had the 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 um, the rockets that they use to go and orbit the Earth and the ones that are used to go to the International Space Station. But their new rocket, which is called Starship, um, is enormous and this will be the rocket that uh, spacex will be using to go to mars so if you haven't seen a picture of this they're trending all over the internet but if you can remember from the looney tunes you remember uh the martian oh yeah yes Mm -hmm. of course you know his rocket ship that's almost exactly what this (laughs) rocket looks like so people are making jokes about it because it looks like a cartoon rocket ship um but they just they're about to launch their first orbital starship so They've been doing a bunch of tests over the last couple years where they have um, a prototype of the Starship that will launch, go in the air, and then hover for a little bit, and then land. And they've had failures, and and the ship has exploded, but over these trials, they've developed uh, a new one that they just finished, and they have a launch pad all built and ready, and soon it will be doing its first orbital around the Earth. That's so amazing. Be happening within the next couple of weeks. You know, I just read yesterday online that Virgin Atlantic, their trips to space. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, everybody was saying like, "Oh gosh, it's two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That's so much money." Well, now as it turns out, that was a bargain, okay? <laughs> because <laughs> now it costs four hundred and fifty thousand dollars for the same oh trip. Oh my gosh! Wow, <laughs> did like, they upgrade the beds or something? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe get a little cocktail up front. I don't yeah, know. I was going to say a glass of champagne. <laughs> yeah, now with working bathrooms. I don't know. <laughs> All right, and Gen Z, tell us uh, about some slang that we have to be able to use in complete sentences. Yes, I, I thought that with. Thanksgiving coming up, uh, we all might be hanging out with some friends and family members, and there might be some Gen Zers there who are going to be speaking lingo that you might not quite understand. So I thought I'd give you a little crash course in some of the slang so that you'll kind of understand what these people are saying. So we're going to start with the, a, a simple one, um, basic. So uh, basic is a word that describes someone that is not uh, doing some that is doing something that's mainstream. So, you know, uh, if you're getting a pumpkin spice latte that's basic if you're wearing like you know something that is like my uggs wearing, just kidding yeah, wearing uggs. uggs and flannel in fall that's basic you, you see what i'm saying so uh that's the first one so uh, to use it in a, in, a, uh, in a sentence his taste in music is pretty basic so Ooh. he likes Ooh. cold play and uh dave matthews band <laughs> <laughs> and you know and grandma's basic Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Poor grandma. She's just trying to enjoy her frappuccino. Give her a exactly. Break. Exactly. All right. We're ready for the next one. Next one's bet. Um, bet. It basically means it's a term for agreement or approval. So um, if someone says, hey, do you want to go to this party? You just say, bet. I'll be there. Right? Oh, so you're saying, yes. Like, yeah, I will. Yes. Okay, bet. 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 Do you want a bet. slice of pumpkin pie? Bet. Yeah. Yes. Perfect. Are we still? Perfect. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So <laughs> you want more turkey? Bet. Exactly. You know, I have to it's use worth this with it. Time Ian. saver. I have to use this with Ian when he says like, "Hey, mom, do you want to go for a hike?" I'll say, "Bet." He'll be like, "What? <laughs> You're gonna blow his mind." <laughs> exactly. 
The next one we have is cap. So cap. Ca- to cap is to lie. So if you ever hear someone say no cap, that means no lie. So for example, I'm going to I'm going to make this basket no cap. You're basically saying I'm going to make this basket not even going to lie. Did cap. you eat the last slice of pumpkin pie? <laughs> No cap. <laughs> I notice a trend, Ellie. Yeah. Something is, it's always pumpkin pie. I'm just, uh, you I'm might want to burn. I'm to Thanksgiving, okay? <laughs> excellent, excellent. Hey. All right, you got, we have time for a couple of more, Matt. All right, we'll do two more. So, Bop uh, is a really good song or beat. So that music is a bop. Okay. Like so, mm, bop from Hanson? Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, that is what they say that it's from. Is from so, yeah. so this meatloaf song is really bop. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> is it bop or is it a bop? Does it need an article in front of it? It does not, but you can okay. say this music a is is a bop, right? Yeah, it's okay. a bop. Okay. Or yes, yes. Um, and then the final one I thought was really funny, and I hear it all the time, is catch these hands. Um, <laughs> it basically means like to fight or to get an argument. Like if someone's disagreeing with you at Thanksgiving dinner, they're about to catch these hands. You see what I'm saying? Because they ate the last slice of pie. It all comes Because they ate around. the last slice of pie. <laughs> That's it. Or how about, you know, Ian uses drip. Oh, yeah, drip is for clothes. So if yeah. you have like a really nice outfit on. Yeah, like uh, we talked then... about with drip. Um, and also, uh, sending me. He uses that S- phrase. Sending me is like. Um, if you really are into something, like it's sending you to the moon because it's so good. So it's sending you. Yeah, or how about glow up? Not grow up. Glow up. (laughs) Glow up is like a a, a swan kind of story, like an ugly duckling to a swan kind of story. If you glowed (laughs) up, so if you're walking around in sweatpants and your hair is all messed up and then you go into the bathroom and you come back out and you're wearing all this beautiful clothes and your makeup's done perfectly, then you've done a glow up. Kim, so it's you, us we, on I, could, I was just gonna say we could use that in a full sentence. Every Friday, uh, all of us have a major glow up. <laughs> we, we get this out. is hard. <laughs> Come on, Ben. Ben looks kids this confused. age. Come on, let's go. That's Absolutely. so meta. Is that even a thing? No. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Matt, for educating us on all things Gen Z, or so that this way we can have conversations around the Thanksgiving Day table. <laughs> hey, Ali, uh, tell us what's trending over at Commando.com. We have some good how-tos. This one I love, how to get that new computer speed back. If your computer is not brand new, it has probably slowed down at least a little bit. So we've got some good tips on how to speed it back up. One of them, of course, is what I talked about, how to uh, get rid of some of those startup programs. This is an important one because we are all hopefully starting to buy our holiday gifts. Hurry, because they're going to sell out soon. (laughs) how to hide the gifts that you buy on Amazon so that you don't ruin the surprise. So if you share an account with somebody or, you know, they use the same computer as you, you want to hide that stuff so they don't see it. And then this is a really good one. This was actually part of the radio show and such a good tip that I want to talk about it here. You should really be keeping your phone number private more often to help avoid scammers. And we'll show you a few ways to do that. And those people who call you nonstop for tech help. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> is that those the people one? too yes yes exactly and uh there's another gen z or term that you all need to know it's called ghosting right it's like where you just mm. stop communicating with someone out of the blue so you know you love tech refresh but you ghost us on social media and stop doing that so we want you to go ahead and follow us on twitter.com slash kim commando there's a trend instagram.com slash kim commando and Facebook.com slash Kim Commando and LinkedIn.com slash Kim Commando. Yes, <laughs> wherever you go on social media, I am there and we are all there. So make sure that you, again, don't ghost us and stay right where you are. Coming up, Ben has a great product review. And here's the kicker. It's not a battery. Let me tell you about a revolutionary new mobile voicemail app. If you've got a business, your voicemail is probably filled with messages from customers. Often the messages don't contain all the details you need. But what if you were able to get visual information from your callers? That's something you can't do with a traditional audio voicemail box, but you can with Fillmore Productions Video Voicemail. With Fillmore Productions Video Voicemail, callers receive a link to download the mobile app. There they can view important details about your business, watch videos about what you have to offer, and then leave you a video message. 
Actors and musicians can showcase what they do, and callers to medical practices or repair shops can report their issues visually. There are so many things that video voicemail can do for a business that makes audio voicemail a thing of the past. Discover what video voicemail can do for your business. Visit GetVideoVoicemail.com. That's GetVideoVoicemail.com. That's GetVideoVoicemail.com. Welcome back to Tech Refresh. It's your weekly fun tech show about all things digital. And, and just a quick reminder, if you haven't already signed up for The Current Newsletter, what are you waiting for? Yes, head over to TheCurrentNewsletter.com. Just sign up. Just give us your email address. We're not going to spam you. You can see a sample as well. It only comes out twice a week, and it's tech news that you need to know to keep you up to date and stuff that you may not hear on Tech Refresh or, or read on our website or any other place. So make sure you head over to TheCurrentNewsletter.com. It's exclusive links, really, exclusive links that you're only going to find in the current newsletter. Again, that's thecurrentnewsletter.com. All right, Ben. So this week, I'm so pleased that it's not a battery, a jumper, a flashlight, or anything like that, <laughs> that we actually have uh, something more useful to a lot of people. I know batteries are very important, but uh, earbuds, is that it? Yeah. Yeah. Not a battery, but it does have three of them. So Ooh. take that with you. Yeah. So, and this is timely too, because, you know, let's say you're shopping for someone who wants nice noise canceling wireless earbuds, but they're just not in the AirPods for whatever reason. You have all these options, you know, Samsung, uh, Beats, which is also Apple, but now there's another option uh, that hit recently, and it's from a company, Verve. I recently reviewed, they're called the Klipsch, that's the company, T52 True Wireless ANC Earphones. See, that just rolls right off the tongue, right? <laughs> oh, easy peasy. Yeah, so we'll just call them the T5s for now. But yeah, but like I said, they're made by Klipsch. That's the same company that made that uh, $1,700 Dolby Atmos soundbar I reviewed a few months ago. It's supposed to like replace your home, home theater. Anyway, they make this too. But these have the kind of unique design. Six different sizes of ear tips. Once you put them in, it just, the shape of the earbud actually feels like it's made for your ear. Okay, so this, if... So if if you happen to be unfortunately born with Dumbo ears, really really big big ears, with really <laughs> really big eardrums, these are going to fit. Well, in that case, I'm not sure if anything will. <laughs> so, you know, no, okay. I did not so test at that, point, uh, you're that just aspect. Gonna get, of it. You're just going to get headphones at that point, just to cover those <laughs> bad boys right up. Hey, and as a side benefit, they get pinned down, and then they might stay there a long way. <laughs> yeah. Well, these are these are kind of cool. They don't have the stem like a lot of them, a lot of the earbuds you see, but they fit nice. And then the, it comes with a metal charging case, which is kind of cool. It makes it heavy, kind of like a like a Zippo lighter. That's what, that's how, and that's how it opens too. Seven hours of battery life. Five if you have the active noise cancellation enabled. Uh, there's an app you can adjust the EQ settings. You know, you can customize what tapping each does, which brings me to a couple of unique features on it. One is an option called Dirac, D-I-R-A-C, HD Sound, which is described as technology that optimizes sound performance for clearer, richer, okay. more balancing. Anyway, but you know, that, a lot of marketing that's a, speak. Yeah, what does that mean? Yeah, does it work? I mean, does, can you tell the difference? It actually does. I thought it was just going to be like this, oh, it's just kind of like digitally enhancing the music to just, and it'll just make everything a little louder. But no, it actually, I, I listened to Apple Music and I would toggle it on and off. And I was like, wow, it really did bring out an instrument I did not even know was in this song or, you know, like a violin in the background. So it, it's actually really cool, that feature. The other thing, it has built-in AI for gesture-based control. So, you know, you can nod three times to answer a call or shake your head three times <laughs> to decline hey, that's it. Cool. That's pretty cool. I guess cool. if you're yeah, in that... public just doing that, you know, for <laughs> seemingly no reason. But anyway, you know, you'll pros, be like in, great. Be, be like in Macy's or something and... <laughs> Have these in. <laughs> the woman's asking you, like, do you need anything else? And you really are looking for that California King, you know, full sheet or sheet. And you're like shaking your head. No. <laughs> okay. yeah, somebody calls security. So, yeah. But, <laughs> but yeah, the, the pros, great design. Like I said, the charging case, the sound feature, the cons, the active noise cancellation works, but it's not as good as my AirPods Pro or even those anchor ones I reviewed a few um, months ago. And the battery life is okay. And like the AI thing, I just don't see a lot of people using that. Here's the thing, though. The biggest drawback is the price tag. Now, the AirPods Pro, when you buy them retail price, when they're not, they're 250 bucks. You can get them for like less than 200 like 180 These cost 
three hundred. Ooh. Yeah, fifty Ooh. over the AirPods Pro, and, and at least a hundred more than a lot of the similar earbuds. So, I love some of the features. That that price alone is that's too much. All right, so it seems like you know if you are looking for earphones, earbuds, the Klipsch T fives are just really not the way to go. Uh, ben has the whole review over on the website. Just head over to commando dot com. That's k o m a n d o dot com, and or just search for reviews, earphones, and then they will pop up. All right, another Gen Zer phrase. Okay, she's she's like you know like if something were to happen, you know if if somebody's over the age of thirty five or forty, they go oh, she's ah. Oh. Man, you know, and that's it's it's it means like you're annoyed, you're disappointed. But in the younger world, it means it's positive, right, Matt? I mean, it's a good yes. thing. But you don't say, oh, you don't say sheesh. You go sheesh. That's how it's done. Wait, say it, do it again. <laughs> Wait, we all want to practice. Sheesh. Sheesh. Like yeah. that. Yes, sheesh. exactly. Sheesh. Yeah, because you know what, sheesh. That means it's great. And so wherever you get your podcasts, you could just leave us the review and say, cheese, right? Would that work, there you Matt? Go. That works. Yeah, okay. absolutely. That's for- So wherever you get your podcasts, make sure that you rate, you review, you subscribe, you follow, and give us that great review. Just say, all together now, we're going to say, cheese. <laughs> Not cheese. It's sheesh. sheesh. <laughs> like that. Like that. And again, thanks for listening. We appreciate you. And as always, uh, make sure that you tell your family members and friends about us because that's how we get more listeners. And I'm Kim Commando. And these are all my friends. And we're just going to say one more time. Sheesh. sheesh. <laughs> I guess I missed that part. Sheesh. <laughs>